Welcome everybody to another Replay Roundup episode and once again I am joined by the mighty Key Hand and today we have a very interesting tank for you, a very new tank for you. Uh, it came in during the Waffentrager Legacy event, it's the KV-4 KTTS. Uh, Mr. Key Hand, do you have any comments to make about this tank before we go into battle? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's sort of a new tank, but then again, it's been in the game files for, I don't know, like eight years already. People have been asking to play it well. Finally, here it is. And uh, it's sort of an interesting one because it does look a lot like a KV-4, but there are differences. It does reload slower, but it does have the bigger alpha to go with it. 360. So I suggest let's head into the replay and have a look. And here we go into the replay we go and we will see how this goes. As you can see, very nice matchmaking here on Ensk encounter nonetheless. Uh, a wonderful situation here. We'll have to see how the top tier gamer here does in his tank destroyer. Um, which you know, I know I know it's a tank destroyer, but I feel like it's a bit more of a heavy, you know, it's a it's a heavy pretending to be a tank destroyer or cosplaying to be a tank destroyer. Uh, heading straight through the center of uh, the eight line. Uh, straight through these buildings here near the train station essentially um honestly i very rarely go here in any tank uh but already getting a nice cheeky shot into the jagdpanzer 4 and we'll have to see if he manages to pick up the kill as he reloads and here it is with that reload time you were saying uh it is a bit longer than the other kv4 i believe uh we can't see the re replay the reload time here but that's okay not the end of the world it's about six or it's seven like six seconds. point something yes six point something and yeah, obviously, 360 alpha, as you could just see, is very much enough to two-shot tier 6 tank destroyers. The Jagdpanzer 4 they're just getting completely blown apart. Notably, though, it is Ensk and it is Encounter. So the cap is actually on the other side of the rails, which means that, uh, I mean, yeah, it's a TD that's cosplaying as a heavy tank. Um, you have these really nice wide gun arcs for a TD. Um, so you can really start side scraping. You can peek around corners easily, um, but he will need to aggress here he will need to advance to get towards the cap uh, should the enemies realize that they need to do it and indeed nice pickup onto the 45 tp the 360 alpha just coming in ever so handy a tiny bit of unfortunate uh argy bargy here as us brits would say between the p43 biz and the kv4 kts he's just trying to get around to help his teammate out i don't think there were any harsh feelings there and will he get the shot in no i don't know where that shot went but the Super Hellcat going in, not holding back, because as you can see on the other side of the map, on the 1-2 line, the enemy heavies are starting to push through, and there's the cap pressure already from what I assume will be the VK3601H. And down goes the Leo to the CS44, and now it's a Borsig. Again, I do not know where that shot went. I think it hit the floor. Uh, I think it hit the ground, yeah. yeah. The Borsig, obviously, not that tall. That contributes to its camo value, but at this kind of distance, you're just going to spot him either way. And then you can start chugging away at the HP, because, as we said, the DPM very good. I think he's trying to get the house here uh, to destroy it, so he can shoot at the Borsig. And now, yes, the green pen indicator does tell us there's a shot available. It does pick up his Tier 8 German counterpart. And now, I guess he won't stop. He's still full HP, and he's about to cross the rails to, uh, I guess, get towards that Tiger 131 there that seems to be inside the cap. Yep, indeed. Um, now, once again, not pushing straight across for the Borsig, because there are tanks here on the side that can crossfire him. And he eliminates the Borsig and then turns his attention. Now it's going to be the Super Hellcat up next on the chopping block as he goes to put a shot in. Beautiful tracking shot as well. Uh, coincidence, probably, but you know what? He was probably going for the damage. We take the tracking for it as well, though. Uh, doesn't manage to secure the kill here. But now, as we can see, cap timer down to two minutes. Encounter, not a lot, not a very fast cap, to be fair. It's a very long cap timer if you're on your own. Uh, so there's not much pressure there in reality. The Tiger 131 does get off the cap circle. And our hero here in the KV-4 KTTS goes around the corner to pick up the kill on the pesky German heavy tank, the VK-3601H. Exactly. The flanking KV-4 KTTS. Who would have thought? <laughs> Um, but obviously, like, it is sort of a super heavy uh, chassis, but then again, the tank can be surprisingly, uh, I, I, I don't want to say nimble, but you can be surprisingly mobile, and that, um, Hellcat here is about to feel the pain as he does pick him up, setting his sights on the next enemy, which is going to be, uh, the SU-100 here, and you can see that alpha tearing through the enemies, uh, over half of the HP gone, and even if he would laurel here, he could probably go for the ram as, I mean, it's the KV-4 chassis. It's going to be very, very heavy. The RT here waiting for him, 262, but at this point in the game, he probably doesn't really care about it. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd keep going for the RT here, honestly, while being stunned. It's a bit of time being used up here. As you can see how long it takes for this cumbersome tank to actually turn. 
while being stunned. I would have kept going after that. CS44 had the artillery at that point. But honestly, all in all, this has been a very smooth sailing game. A very easy game so far, if you ask me. Six kills so far, 4.7k damage. Uh, and plenty more to come from that point of view anyways. As the next tank up on the chopping block. SU-100M1 and a VK-3601H. Deja vu kind of moment. I'm pretty sure we just saw one of these earlier on get uh, killed by the KV-4 cases. Yes. What could possibly happen here? I wonder. And obviously, nice target selection as well. He's going for the tier 7 TD before he goes for the tier 6 heavy tank. Because that one obviously is going to have higher penetration values. And now he's... Just, you know, uh, reaping the rewards of his gameplay here. Just being able to put shot after shot into the VK36. Now turning his sights onto the Tiger 131 that is about to be made very aware that there is a tier 8 TD in his side. Uh, does get picked up though and suddenly it's a 3. Uh, I was about to say 4 but make that 3v1 as the enemy Barask is able to pick up the allied Barask. And now... Good tracking shot here, and obviously with that tier, fr uh, tier 8 French medium tank, you're not really able to give chase in a KB4K TTS. So, good decision here to just stay on the cap, you know, and just wait uh, for what is about to happen. I think more importantly, take a look at his positioning in the cap circle. He's sitting in the uh, lower right sector here, or our lower right here, actual bottom left on the minimap, because he can actually spot the crossing back up the one line, and he can also spot this crossing here where the Barask is running across. Unfortunately, it looks like that shot didn't quite connect. Barras getting greedy for a reset there, tries to peek out again for an extra shot. And now, reloaded once again. The only place the Barras can really go is up the 5-6 line or try and make a run down the 8-9-0 line. So we see the KV-4 KTTS now shifting over to the other side of the cap just to pre-aim in case the Barras tries anything cheeky. Uh, and we'll have to see how this goes. So 16 seconds on the counter. Again, 7 kills so far. Can he pick up the 8? There's the Barras trying to get the shot on the one-shot CS-44. He does get it, gets a nice reset. And now it's just a matter of the Barras can't really push down the right side of our KV-4 here because the AT-7's there. So might as well just come in from this side of the uh, the block of flats here and just come around the corner. Put one into him. Unfortunately, it didn't quite secure the kill, leaving the Barask on 26 HP. Uh, but at this rate, you know, with that gun arc, pretty easy kill to pick up at that rate with that rate of fire. And that's 6.6k damage and 8 kills. Exactly. Pretty smooth sailing this game, but that's sometimes how it is. And obviously, with eight kills and six and a half K damage on the board, uh, I would say that was a pretty, pretty big carry for um, for our hero here, Mr. BMW Drift EU. Um, and yeah, I guess let's head over into the post-game stats where we do see he obviously got an ace tanker for that one. Then also fire for effect, bruiser, duelist, shell proof. But more importantly, the Radley Walters for eight kills, obviously you do get a high caliber with that as well, as well as a top gun. And uh, I guess you take us through the team scores and also how much credits he spent or probably made as this is a premium tank. Yo, well, yep. As you can see, top on damage with 6,655 damage, eight kills, 1.8k base XP. I mean, I should say 1.9 because it's 1,891. You can round that up. Seven accolades to his name there, as you mentioned. Nice uh, collection of medals right there, including the Radley Walton players and a top gun, which is beautiful. Love to see it. Uh, the only person really even coming close is a Barask on the enemy team with 3k. Fair performance by his behalf. He did pick up four badges as well. So we love to see it. You know, they both had a great game by the looks of it. Can't really complain with uh, the enemy Barask's performance either here. Uh, but the majority of his team, I don't even think they had a chance to farm anything. The KV-4 KTTS was just shutting down tanks left, right, and center through this game. As for detailed report, making 165,000 credit profit uh, in this Terry premium tank. Uh, you love to see it. 31 shots fired, 23 direct hits, 22 penetrations. Pretty solid performance there. Um, but yeah, only a six-minute battle and, you know, 165,000 credits into the bank there, I guess. pretty Pretty solid performance and... Uh, nice credit grind right there. I guess you take those. Anyway, uh, that finishes off this week's replay roundup. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get notified of future videos. We'll be back soon with another episode. See ya.